Undead City, a zombie book. Part 1. The Climb. As the undead stalker shuffled toward her, the singer leveled her revolver, pulled the trigger, and shot him through the heart. He crumpled to the floor onto another of his kind. It had been three days since the dead had risen, and most couldn't decide if it was the end times, or if resurrection through biological warfare had been achieved. Their country was at war after all. Her companions, the paramedic, the cashier, the thief, and her bodyguard, stood near her on the third floor of the high-rise building covered in sweat and blood. Dark forms at the base of the building moved about aimlessly under the night sky. Uneven gasps came from each of the shuffling undead for, while they continued to walk, kill, and eat like the living, these creatures were decaying and dying from within. Many were functioning on collapsed lungs or broken limbs. After barring the exits shut and finally securing the third floor, the paramedics suggested a different approach to their continued survival. Head to the nearby hospital, procure one of the ambulances for which he had the keys and flee the city. They could try to obtain a different vehicle en route. Los Cuchillos was a large city and a peninsula whose one outlet to the mainland was an 800-foot wide sliver of grass and roadway. It was rumored to be the only city that was completely overrun. The singer was receptive to the paramedic's suggestion, but had a few ideas of her own. The hospital was around four miles away on the main roads, but a shorter route rumored to be thicker with the undead made the trip two and a half miles out. The singer, famous, talented, small, and beautiful, opined this route was riskier, but reduced their time on the dangerous undead-infested streets. The paramedic, tall, fit, and stubborn, preferred the longer route with less undead. The path of least resistance was longer but safer. The cashier, tall, portly, and good-natured, suggested staying put and waiting for help to arrive. The high-rise was a fortress against the monsters that wanted in. The bodyguard, athletic, reactive, and afflicted with materialism, wanted to leave the city and didn't care which way they went, so long as they stayed in a group, for there was safety in numbers. The thief, the youngest member of their group and a thin chatterbox whose need for money drove most of his decisions, agreed that the shorter route was riskier, but noted that high risks usually levied high rewards. Plus, he knew of many places along the shorter path that housed valuable items and were easily accessible if they needed a hiding spot in a pinch. Loud stomping could be heard above the small group as they discussed their next move. On the fourth floor, and the two above that, more undead moved about freely. Only half the building had been cleared at this point and they'd already lost two members. Did they really want to lose two more to get the rest? Four of the group decided they would leave for the hospital the next day. The cashier would not risk the dangers of the infected city. A noise like a plunger being roughly pulled from porcelain caused the group to freeze in place. Then each scurried to a hiding spot like cockroaches exposed to light. A decayed hand appeared on the outside of the glass that made up the entire exterior of the high-rise. An undead climber with long, stringy hair had managed to scale three stories, as was his nature to do so. He had detected the scent of the living, and being dead, he craved life like no other. He snorted, then smashed his head against the window three times. When he didn't receive a reaction from within, he stretched his limbs upward, one over the other, until he disappeared from sight. Survivors remaining. Five. Part Two. The Comfort Zone. The cashier moved out of the high-rise building at noon through a side exit with the small group he'd grown so fond of over the last few days. Fortunately, the undead rarely ever lingered at this side exit due to a chain-link fence that ran alongside the adjacent parking lot, which made it difficult for stalkers to enter. Climbers were a different story, however. Currently, there were no undead there, leaving the group a window of opportunity to flee. The paramedic shook the cashier's hand and wished him luck, as was his custom, before parting with the others. The singer waved to him with a concerned smile before continuing forward. The bodyguard and thief said nothing and remained distant. The feeling of complete loneliness didn't settle in until the cashier had reached the second floor alone, and he wondered, did I make the wrong decision? Within the high-rise, within this fortress that now belonged to him, he had food and water, unlimited places to hide and three floors of walls, glass, and barred doors to keep the undead from reaching him. There could be no other choice. While the prospect of something better could wait at the hospital and beyond, the high-rise would keep him safe until help arrived. And he knew it would. Good things always came to those who waited. As day turned to night once again, the loneliness crept forward. 
though it was different than before. The thought of help arriving had always kept him at a healthy equilibrium. But what if his help had already come and gone? What if the small group he'd survived with were the help he'd been waiting for? Now, he truly was alone, and help might never come. Loud banging on the barred exit doors announced the arrival of unwanted newcomers. Shotgun now in hand, the cashier wondered how they could have gotten in. They must have come from one of the upper floors. The undead stalkers with their enhanced sense of smell must have finally caught his scent. Soon the sound of a plunger on porcelain filled the room once again. He looked to the glass wall behind him and, grinning like a madman, the same undead climber from the night before was staring at him with wide, wanting eyes. His expression wasn't intentional, however, as the undead didn't seem to convey emotions like the living did. He looked this way because he had no choice. His eyelids and lips had been completely torn away. The undead climber repeatedly slammed his head against the glass, eventually managing to shatter it before slinking into the room. The cashier unloaded a slug in his direction but found no purchase as the creature moved behind some metal crates. Moving about on four limbs, the climber made his way to the barred exit and using a liberated hammer, smashed the lock holding the chains together. The cashier unloaded slug after slug into the oncoming cluster of undead stalkers that surged through the open doors. Five dropped to the floor before the cashier was forced to take refuge on the highest metal crate standing ten feet tall. Soon, he was surrounded by two dozen undead stalkers reaching for him without success. Skittering limbs moved from one dark spot in the room to another. The cashier loaded his shotgun once again. The awkward amalgamation of limbs appeared closer, and this time the decaying teeth reflected off the bright moonlight that filled half the room. The cashier raised his weapon high up as a thin silhouette launched itself at him, its teeth the only visible thing in the darkness. The shotgun barked, punching a hole into the undead climber's head. His corpse continued soaring toward the cashier, however, knocking him from his point of elevation and into the wanting stalkers below. He felt two sets of teeth tear into his flesh before he was able to get to his feet. With all his energy, he moved his large frame toward the exit in complete futility as two dozen stalkers hobbled after him. The bites turned him before he reached the end of the stairwell leading to the first floor. And once he was a member of the undead, the stalkers had no interest in him. The dead craved the living, not the dead. The cashier, now a stalker, let his nose take in the scent of the nearest living person. In death, his sense of smell had heightened. And unlike his undead brethren nearby, he was able to sense this human because he had been surrounded by his scent for the four days he had spent holed up in the high-rise with him. The paramedic was close by, much closer than the others. Survivors remaining. Four. To hear the rest of this story, you can head over to Amazon and read Undead City, a zombie book for free on Amazon's Kindle Vela. Six more chapters remain. And remember, beware the scientist.